In this video, we're going to explore how to restore an antique license plate and get to use it on an automobile here in Arizona. Other states may have similar laws. Stay tuned. The plate you see before you is a 1939 Arizona license plate E4347. This is Marco Stenisa. I'm going to have to look up why in 1939 they had Marco Stenisa on the license plates. I'll tell you about that later in the video. Right now I'm showing you the original condition. It's essentially rusty. You can see some of the black paint is still in place on the lettering and numbers. Background really should be sort of an orangey yellow. And we will be redoing this plate so it looks brand new. We're going to show you everything we do to it. So we can use it on my 1939 four-door sedan Graham. The green one, the number of you have seen videos. If you haven't, check them out. You'll see what the car is really like. But I'm going to change to this instead of the standard Arizona copper collector vehicle license plate that's currently on there. First step we're going to go through with this is to take it over and stick it in our bath of de-rusting solution. And we're going to someday do a major video on that, but I'm putting that overnight and you'll see the difference between now and what we get in the morning. All right, there we have the license plate after overnight soaking in the de-rusting solution and then scrubbed off. What you see, which looks kind of orange, that's the background color it was used at the time with black lettering. Next thing I'm going to go do and show you is we're going to go and straighten this. We're going to use the anvil and hammers and or chisels and punches as necessary and we're going to get this little puppy straightened out well enough to be restored. After all the little pounding there and straightening, we're going to go through and we're going to clean this off the rest of the way using wire brush, etc., to get the rest of the paint off of it so we can work on it to finish it up.
wire brushing on the front here. I've got most of it done, but you can see I'm using some steel wool to go in and get some more of it off. It still may leave me with some spots that I'll need to take a moto tool with a wire brush in it down in the small portions of the letters to get the rest of it off. And that's the front side. Look at the back side and you can see how fast it's going to come off here, the back side having been more protected in its life. It's easier to take stuff off of it. Comes off real fast. And this is quadruple aught steel wool, so this isn't even a coarse steel wool that I'm using. And it's just taking stuff right out. Nice quick way of removing the rest of what's on the license plate after what we've done so far and processing it, getting rid of rust, doing a lot of little straightening. Another thing that happens when you do this is you get some spots that you notice that, oh, i got to go back and straighten, so I might make a trip back to the anvil a couple of times when you're doing it to straighten it up. But it turns out real nice and helps you see stuff. You've got a moto tool here, wire brush, so we can get in some of the smaller areas that we're having troubles getting into so far. Next up, we're going to use Marhide self-etching primer on the license plate. This is actually a 3M product. I'm going to throw it around. That's what it is. It says so right here. It means it's really good, but it's not the most inexpensive thing, but it works really, really well for what we want to do, which it'll work on steel, aluminum, stainless steel, and galvanized steel. It's ready to spray. Get it at a local auto parts store. Follow the directions. It gets dry in about 10 to 15 minutes. It takes two hours before you should recoat it. That's getting the self etching into the metal and actually grabbing on really well. And if you spray over it within 36 hours, you don't have to sand it. So, this is the product we're going to use. I'm going to spray it off camera and give you a shot of it so you can see where we are and what's going to be the next step. And here we have the plate itself having gotten its coat of self etching primer. We've done both sides, of course. And self-etching primer, you don't have to get everything totally so it's opaque. A little see-through is good. But what you can see, and it may not show in the video, particularly up along here, there's a lot of little pitting that we're going to have to get rid of. That's part of the reason you're seeing some different coloration here is the little pits all over the place. And they're not horrible, but we're going to show you how we're going to get rid of those. Now we're going to let those sit for a couple hours before the next step. Next step, we gave the license plate both sides Krylon Cover Max Gray Primer. This gives us something good to work against. We did this about two hours after our initial Marhide self etching primer. It allows us to not only work on finishing up the license plate, but it allows us to see some things we didn't see before when it was shiny. Like there's a little pushed out dimple here and here, and over here is a little pushed in dimple. So we're going to go straighten those out just a little bit, a little tapping, and then we'll be back with our next step on the license plate. Here we have our miniature temporary anvil, a cheap Chinese punch. You can see how 
nice that just pushes over, but it will make a good anvil. We'll use that and a ball peen hammer and hammer out these little problem points. We get it centered over it, about there. That's one. Looking better. And we'll catch our next one over here. Much better on both of those. Now this one we'll need a different setup for. A little smaller punch that we can actually tap with in the corner here. Let's see how we did. Got rid of that, all done. A little bit of final off camera tapping was done here and there. Get everything to where we want it to be. Up along here on the very top edge. You'll see that's fairly rough. That's where most of the rust damage on the whole thing is. Also right here in the Z in Arizona, there's some rust damage there. Next up, therefore, is to fill the rust damage a little bit. And then we're going to be able to get more serious with actually finishing this license plate. This is the product we're going to use to fill with. This is Bondo Glazing and Spot Putty. It's good for these little pits. Realistically, what this is is really thick primer. It's another 3M product, which will work just fine to fill in the pits. And you have to let it dry in between, although it dries pretty fast because it's lacquer based. So it's a very quick drying product. So I'm going to go along and fill in these little pits that we have. And as you can see, it's quite thick. I can come along and put it in. One of the things to keep in mind is being lacquer based and considering we have Krylon on here, you don't want to keep scraping on it because you'll tend to cause the paint to lift if you do that. You also would like your primer fairly dry. But because this is a used tube and it's already quite thick, it's not going to cause much lifting. And you notice with the knife here, I can take off little bits that I don't want fairly easy. This is a very easy sanding material. And when we're talking about all these little pits, it works really good. Now, of course, you could use body filler, but the pits are really fairly small. I mean, although quite noticeable, they're really not worth mixing up a batch of body filler and running along this edge with that for the purpose at hand. So I'm just going to go along and finish up the filling, scraping off excess, just as you see. We have the license plate with the filler applied. I'm going to let that dry thoroughly. And then we're going to be on to a little wet sanding. We'll show you how we do that as we progress with the license plate. Here we are wet sanding after we've allowed the filler to dry using a hard rubber block, about a quarter inch thick, some water in an cake, old cake pan that has dish soap in it, and carefully sanding the areas with 320 grit sandpaper. And you can see in some of it will go right through all the primer, but not everywhere. Now, if we can't totally get down in the groove with this, we can always switch to a soft foam block and finish it that way. Here we have the license plate after processing it through about six times with primer surfacer and wet sanding in between, utilizing our little cake pan over there. And our 320, there it is, 320 grit on a foam piece. And you can see it gets kind of beat up after all that time, about six times through. So that's what we did. And the 320 sandpaper is 3M also. Holds up real well as a wet-dry sandpaper. You know, it's just a little water with just a drop of Dawn dish soap. If we found a bad spot where we missed, we used our little spot glazing putty to fill that in. And... Uh, Constantly watched here and there for little bits needed that. Also, when you're working in the letters, works kind of good to use a piece of Scotch-Brite. Cuts easily with your average scissors there. 
and work between the letters and make things as smooth as you can possibly make them. I didn't bore you with all that because it's just going to be endless sanding, which I probably would have had to just speed up because you'd be bored to tears. Realistically, it probably took me about three hours of painting, sanding, a little filling, back and forth. And as I said, about six times in order to get this really nice. That's because there was some pitting in it, as you knew up front. And it all needed to go away if we're going to get a good finish in the end. Now, what did we use for primer surfacer? In this case, we used this. This is Master Pro Refinishing. It's a product that you can pick up at O'Reilly. Interestingly, that's actually a lacquer primer surfacer. And you'd think in the 21st century, they keep telling us lacquer is going to kill us and everything else is going to kill us. Well, <laughs> something's going to kill you anyway. But uh, the lacquer primer surfacer is really good for something like this because you can spray it and it'll be dry to the touch in five to 10 minutes. It probably doesn't even take five minutes here because it was running 90 some degrees here in Arizona when I'm doing it. So it was really fast to dry. I'm utilizing it as suggested for mixing pretty much one to one. Sometimes I'll go up to three to one if I'm trying to get something real smooth. But also you gotta remember when you thin it down like that two things happen it actually dries fast and it also doesn't cover as well but what i try to do is make sure that i'm keeping it about like a pancake batter so that you can actually spray it nicely because if i get it don't spray it wet enough on there i'll get pebbly surface because of the high temperature but anyway we got that all done, all set. Now the other thing you should know is the back is just left like this. And there's little flaws in here in the back, particularly up on this upper edge. I didn't worry about that because the car this is going to go on, you can't see the back. If I had it going on the car like the 37 Terraplane I have, I'd have done both sides real well because that you can see because the license plate holder holds it out from the body where you can actually see it. This is going to go on the 39 gram when it's done, the green one. And... There's no way you can ever see the back, so the back is more about just getting it covered, not about making it all perfect and beautiful. And of course, the back actually, other than, when I flip it around here, other than mostly right up here at the edge, is in amazingly good shape. The reason for that is, of course, it was against a car and wasn't exposed as much as the outside of the plate was in most of its life. So this is ready for the next step, which is going to be the coat of orange paint. And I'll say this before we even get into that, orange doesn't cover that well, neither does yellow. So it's when I said a coat, it's probably multiple coats. I'll tell you how many coats it takes to do that. And then we'll go into how we do the lettering. And that I'll probably actually show you when I do the spray coat over here for the color. I'll show it finished. I'm not gonna show me spraying back and forth on that. That's gonna be kind of boring. But I will show you when it's finished with the base color. And then we're going to show you how I go about the lettering. And we'll basically get this little puppy finished up for you. One other thing somebody is going to be interested in. I said this in the beginning. And at this point, we'll probably drop it in. I was saying, I wondered who Marcos Denisa is or what Marcos Denisa is. Well, I bothered to look it up. And we're going to put in here a shot of Marcos Denisa back 1539 to 1939, you notice there's 400 years listed on the license plate. The reason it is is Marco Stenisa is a Franciscan friar, it turns out, believed to be the first European to ever come to the state of Arizona. Came up through what we know of as Mexico into the state of Arizona back in the 1500s. And because of this 400 year anniversary that they were looking at, they had the 1939 plates in the state put with Marco Stenisa on them as a remembrance of him coming here. So that's what that is about. And believe it or not, Tempe, Arizona, there is a high school named after Marcos de Nisa. So this is just Limco acrylic enamel paint, as I said, labeled a 39 license plate. That's what I wrote on it, so I know what it was. And just a advantage fast dry urethane reducer was used and that's all it took to do this and I used a touch up gun for it but as I said I'm not going to paint it in front of you because that would have just been boring. Next up though we will show you kind of how we go about painting the actual numbers and letters on it. Well it's the following day let this dry overnight thoroughly and now we're going to start the application of the actual 
black to the lettering. Now, of course, this is raised like the license plates used to be instead of these stupid ones now that they just paint. They won't look nice after a number of years. And it'll be having to be silk screened, I suppose, for somebody to actually redo those. Right here I have in my hand what I refer to as a paint pick. The reason I would refer to it as that is because I use these normally to pick little flaws out of paint, like let's say a bug showed up that you didn't figure on or a piece of hair or a piece of dirt. You can pick out a paint when you're spray painting and often save things. What they actually are is Easy Dabber by Easy Mix Disposable Paint Applicators. A fairly expensive little item, but useful for the purpose at hand. That's why I have them, because they're perfect for doing some of the lettering on here. Also have one other item, a brand new can of black one-shot paint, which we're going to use for the actual lettering. This, if you need to, you can thin with mineral spirits, and it won't damage the paint below it, so that's why we're going to use it. This is really sign painter's paint. Now, using the little paint pick, I'm going to start painting the various numbers and letters on here. This works significantly better than a brush, because a brush, of course, has hairs on it. And the brush tends to then create problems with you when you're painting a given area. Now you see I got a little too wide there, so now I'm going to have to clean that off. And there's multiple ways to do that. Probably the easiest way, though, is to use another one of these little paint picks. And as I said, since they actually can be cleaned or thinned, pardon me, with mineral spirits, you can come along and wipe something off. And then you can clean off this paint pick and just use it again for whatever you have to do. So I got most of it, but I'll go back and get the rest of it. But I'm going to go through and do all of this, and it's painstaking, but when it's done, it looks beautiful. And when I get it finished, we'll let you see it. And there we have the completed license plate after final painting in black and drying. Looking not too bad, considering what we start with. All set to go see if we can actually put it on the 39 gram. Have to check that out with the state, obviously. If we can't, something nice to decorate a wall. The only way we couldn't is if somebody else was always already using 4347, E4347. Probably not the case. So that's the next step is getting her put on the car. Hope you enjoyed this little video showing you how you can restore a license plate. Obviously applicable to any license plate. Like and subscribe. If you have comments to the channel, we try to always answer them. See you later.